The place is ancient Egypt, the time is the late 1700s BC. Pharaoh Amenemhat III had a daughter named Sobak Neferu. She became the first historically confirmed female pharaoh when her brother died. Her reign over Egypt's 12th dynasty lasted less than four years and she died of unknown causes. She is believed to be buried in the northern Mezguna pyramid. Upon her death, the 12th dynasty ended as she had no heir. It would be over 300 years until the next known female pharaoh would ascend to the throne. It would be worth the wait as she would become one of the most significant pharaohs in history. Her name was Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut succeeded her brother, and she was acutely aware that she would have to protect herself from the constant threat of being pushed out of power and replaced with a male pharaoh. As such she took steps to safeguard her legacy. She used her royal bloodline, her high education, and her understanding of religion in order to establish herself as the god's wife of Amun. She claimed that Amun had appeared to her mother in the form of an ancestral pharaoh and conceived her, thus making her a demigoddess. She married off her daughter Nefrori to her likely successor in the event of a coup. This made her daughter one of the most prestigious and powerful women in the land. She also sent her stepson and co-regent on military campaigns, perhaps to keep him from attempting to overthrow her. He would later attempt to destroy her legacy after her death so perhaps this was a wise move. Hatshepsut reigned for about 22 years and re-established the trade networks that had been disrupted during past occupations of Egypt and brought back vast riches including ivory, ebony, gold, leopard skins and incense from modern-day Eritrea. Hatshepsut was one of the most prolific builders in ancient Egypt, commissioning buildings far grander and more numerous than those of her predecessors and creating employment for her people. Male pharaohs who came after her attempted to claim some of her projects as theirs. Her work would come to be admired by the Greeks during the occupation of Egypt. The great wealth that her policies and administration brought to Egypt enabled her to finance such projects. Her building projects were so vast that there are hardly any museums today featuring ancient Egyptian art and artifacts which do not have some piece commissioned by her. Women had a relatively high status in ancient Egypt and enjoyed the legal right to own, inherit, or pass on property. But as a testament to the human curse of misogyny, Hatshepsut felt she had to portray herself in some statues and paintings with a male body and false beard. Subsequent male rulers would go to great lengths to destroy Hatshepsut's buildings and monuments. One can only analyze the mentality that would drive these men to destroy their own cultural heritage or attempt to erase a woman's legacy by claiming it as their own. It would be thousands of years later when her tomb was found that Hatshepsut's legacy as one of Egypt's most powerful pharaohs would finally be restored. It, it is identified with the person and therefore that tooth exactly fit with the mummy that we found in KV60. This lady was fat, she died in the age of 50, she had diabetes and she died because of cancer. Hatshepsut's 21-year reign was the longest reign of any female pharaoh, and it was a time of peace and prosperity for Egypt. And both she and Sobek Neferu have reclaimed their place in history as the first two known female pharaohs of Egypt.